Dr. Hagenbeek, thank you very much for joining us in Stockholm. Uh -huh. um, first of all, can you highlight some of the um, more important clinical developments in the management of blood disorders that have been showcased at this meeting? Yes, well we had a very exciting press briefing uh, two days ago where we invited the, the breakthrough abstracts and they were briefly presented in lay language to the press that was uh, there. And uh, some of the highlights there had to do with multiple myeloma, a bone form of bone marrow cancer that uh, is a dreadful disease to treat. But there are certain exciting new developments. One is in the field of a new small molecule, an immunomodulator. We all know about thalidomide and lenalidomide, but this is a third generation pomalidomide. The names get more complex all the time. Mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced it correctly. And there was an exciting study, a large randomized study uh, from Spain, uh, Dr. San Miguel, who added pomalidomide to dexamethasone. And without that much side effects, he showed that those patients in relapse of multiple myeloma had a significantly better overall survival. That's, of course, the one and only thing that really counts for a patient. How long can I live and can I be cured? So that was a... Uh, uh a breakthrough in the field of multiple myeloma. Another abstract on that point was just like we have been uh, witness, witness of the development in the treatment of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, lymph node cancer, by adding rituximab, the well-known antibody that has made a difference. There's now an antibody being explored, again, in multiple myeloma, directed against the malignant plasma cells that are the core of multiple myeloma. And Dr. Lockhorst from Utrecht, representing an international study group, for the first time showed the efficacy of this antibody with no major side effects to reduce the number of plasma cells to really put patients with multiple myeloma in a remission. So that is another step forward, both in the uh, arena of uh, bone marrow cancer and multiple myeloma. Now you've, um, you've talked about overall survival being the most important factor for yes. patients, but also their quality of life yes. during that survival. Yeah. Can yeah. you say something about that? Well, uh, these patients, as I said, did not really uh, uh, experience any major side effects of the antibody treatment. It's an outdoor patient clinic procedure. So they come in, they get the antibody, they go home again. And their quality of life, uh, while the disease is going, you know, back in its cage, is only improving. So it's uh, a two-hitting sword. That my myeloma is uh, going into remission and the quality of life is improving. So it's a win-win situation, yeah. So in terms of um, uh, the future of uh, blood disorders, do you think it's in safe hands in the next few years, in Europe at least? Uh, in safe hands, I mean the, the new molecules that are being explored because that was another exciting uh, contribution by Dr. Wynton Wilson from the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda in the USA. And that is in the general context of the large number of small smart molecules that continuously drip from the pipeline from the biotech companies, uh, driven by more insight into the origin of these malignant diseases like lymphoma and leukemia, where molecularologists now gradually step by step uh, unravel the signal transduction pathways through which a cell, malignant cell keeps dividing. And subsequently, if they have that inside, they prepare small molecules that block those pathways. And the cell doesn't get any signals anymore and is destined to die. And that was another major contribution this time from Dr. Wilson with a small molecule in a tablet. Uh, and if you take that tablet once a day with no major side effects again, outdoor patient clinic, lymphoma also goes into remission. And the next step, of course, is to combine those small molecules to block similar uh, uh, pathways at the same time, because those cancer cells are very smart. If one pathway is blocked, they take another route, but the molecular at the end will be smarter. They also block those other pathways. So that is really the near future uh, of uh, malignant hematology. So from a research perspective, uh, quite exciting times ahead. It is, it is, it is. And there are even more molecules dripping from the pipelines than there are patients, so to speak. So. It's also quite a challenge for us as clinical hematologists to change the trial designs, not comparing 300 patients with the new drug versus 300 patients with the best drug so far, but making more clever trial designs with smaller subgroups of patients uh, and getting to an answer more rapidly. Because it's also clear in acute leukemia, in lymphoma, that we are not dealing with one disease entity. Because we know now that 
for instance, acute myelocytic leukemia consists of 30, at least 30 different subtypes based on the genetic abnormalities that uh, you can group now the patients in. So uh, the old-fashioned one-size-fits-all in terms of choosing a treatment is going to disappear. We are going to personalize medicine based on the characteristics, the molecular characteristics of a given tumor. And that might differ from patient to patient. So that's another challenge that also needs refined molecular diagnostics before you make up your mind what the best possible treatment for that patient is. And by choosing that, we also prevent over-treatment and under-treatment. Today in oncology in general, 70%, 70% of patients are being bombarded with chemotherapy without any success. It's only toxicity, only 30% profit in some way or another. And that is something that has to be changed to prevent toxicity and give the patient the appropriate molecule. Thank you very much indeed.